So how do you repot a Venus flytrap? Well, let's find out. Okay, so I have two Venus flytraps here that I bought from the store because I'm going to be doing an experiment on these. There'll be a separate video about that later. But the point is I needed to buy two fly traps and I figured, you know what, this will be a great opportunity to make a repotting video. So we're going to talk all about repotting today. And there's a few ingredients you're going to need, of course. Uh, some new soil or substrate since there's not really much soil in this. If you've seen my previous video, which I will link either down below or somewhere within the video, uh, Venus flytraps need some specific soil to grow in. So what I like to use is long fibered sphagnum moss. And I'll probably link some links down in the description to the correct kind of moss you can buy. But in general, you just want to buy nutrient-free, and most of them are fertilizer and nutrient-free. So just a high-quality sphagnum moss. Second thing you need is perlite, because uh, that helps improve drainage. You're going to especially need it if you're going to use peat moss, which is something I'll talk about shortly. Uh, but perlite is just kind of a white rock, white volcanic rock, and I bought the organic one because this one means that they don't add any kind of fertilizers or extra nutrients to it, so it doesn't burn the roots on the Venus flytrap. So, nutrient-free sphagnum, nutrient-free perlite, and also you can get nutrient-free peat moss, which I don't have right now. I'll link it in the description because I have a big bale of it, but I have some in this bag, so we'll be talking about both methods today. Some other things you're going to need are, of course, distilled water or rainwater. Uh, distilled water is the best, so you need this to water your plants anyway, so get some distilled water. Uh, some pots for the Venus fly traps. I like to use these square ones. Specifically, uh, the measurements are uh, well, if these smaller ones, which are kind of good enough, will go with about three inches deep and two and a half inches across the top. So this is just kind of, it's kind of on the smaller side. Ideally, the perfect pot you would want for a Venus flytrap uh, would be something like, you know, three inches wide and about, you know, four and a half to six inches deep. So... You want to pot somewhere around those measurements. So we've got the soil, we've got the pots. Uh, one extra thing uh, I would do is to put on gloves just because it helps you from getting your hands dirty and you know dirt underneath my fingernails. So let's go ahead and repot these Venus fly traps. Well, but first, let's talk about when you want to repot a Venus fly trap. Uh, if you first buy it, you just got it from the store, you probably want to repot it because the stores likely don't use distilled water. They've been just putting tap water on it, which will build up minerals and nutrients inside of here and kill the plant. Uh, oftentimes, you know, like this was sitting in water, so they keep it too wet. You start getting algae on the soil. Uh, sometimes they use questionable soils. Um, other times, like the pot is way too small. Uh, like I said earlier, you want around six inches, probably like a minimum of four inches deep for those roots to grow straight down. So usually when you get it from the store, you want to repot it. All right, cool. So repotting the Venus fly traps is pretty easy. First thing we have to do is mix up our soil. So I'm going to demonstrate both methods here because why not? I always recommend the long fibered sphagnum moss, but you can use peat moss if you can't find the sphagnum for whatever reason. Although I think that if you're already looking in the stores or ordering online, it should be easy enough. But how do we make the peat moss mix? Well, first thing you want to do is get some nutrient free peat moss. And you're going to mix this about 50-50, peat moss and perlite. So we're going to dump some of this in here. And then you mix it up a little bit, just to kind of make sure everything is thoroughly mixed. And usually what you want to do is, if the peat is dry, add some water. Now I'm only adding a little bit because this was pre-moistened in the bag, but make sure you moisten it so that it's not dry. 
All right, then all we have to do is you get the pot and you start pouring it in here. And I kind of fill it up to the top, pack it gently. You don't need to be shoving it down in here, just kind of to the top of the pot, pack it down. So that's pretty much ready to go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the Venus flytrap out of this pot. And I know a lot of people like to be really gentle with it. Uh, you don't really need to be too gentle. I mean, obviously don't start ripping everything apart. Um, but they're pretty tolerant. You don't really need to, you know, be screwing around too much, being too gentle or whatever. And we kind of just take all of the soil, or in this case, all the sphagnum moss, off of the plant. We can toss that aside. And then what we have here is just the Venus flytrap with the rhizome down here and the roots. So, what we're going to want to do is kind of grab all the leaves like this up here. There we go. Then what you do is you take your pot. What I like to do, and this is why I'm wearing gloves, is I put my index finger down here. I make a hole in the center of the pot, kind of, you know, almost towards the very bottom. So now we have that hole in here. And we're going to put the Venus flytrap down in here, kind of uh, up to where that transition zone is in between the white rhizome and the green leaves. So about kind of, you know, up to just to cover the white part of the rhizome. You don't want to plant them too deep. So we're just kind of going to pack it down in there. And then we push all the soil kind of from the sides towards the rhizome so it's nice and snug inside of there. I'm gonna probably have to add more and then just kind of start packing it down. You can lift these traps out of the way. Oftentimes they'll close shut, but that's not really a big deal. They'll reopen soon enough. So just kind of pack it around the sides. And last step is we're gonna take the distilled water and then just kind of water the plant to have everything settled in place, and there you have a repotted Venus flytrap. So the second thing we're gonna do is repot it in sphagnum, which is my preferred soil, but the method is pretty much the same. So we wanna break this sphagnum moss up a little bit. This is dry out of the bag, so I'm going to just pour some water over it to moisten it up. You can soak it for a while, but you don't need to. And then just kind of, you know, pat it down, make sure it's soaking up most of the water. You can wait a few minutes, but I'm just kind of doing this a little bit quickly for the video, but you know, it's moist enough. So just kind of let it soak up some of that water. And then I do still add perlite to my sphagnum just so it doesn't compact too much. Three parts sphagnum and one part perlite. So, you know, just a little bit in there to kind of give it some breathability. And then we're good to go. So, kind of same method as the peat moss. What we do as well, I'll use the same container. So we get our container again. We get the sphagnum moss and we kind of just start packing it in here. You know, not too gently, not too, you know, forcefully, but just kind of medium strength. Pack it all in here. And then what I do is I start making the hole. And maybe, you know, a little more right until the very top of the pot. So then poke a hole with my finger. Take this one out of its old pot. Kind of squeeze the sides to loosen it up a little bit. Pull it out, get that tag out of here, and break up all that old sphagnum moss. I'll put that to the side. I like to, you know, get everything I can off of the rhizome, because who knows, you know, if there's minerals in this sphagnum now. So we got all that out of here. We pretty much have the Venus flytrap, rhizome, and the roots. There's some sphagnum. You don't need to get it all, but just most of it. So we take that, same way, roots first. 
make a deep hole inside of this pot almost towards the bottom and then sometimes the roots it's a bit tricky but just kind of you know pack them all down into that hole once it's almost you know down in there you can start packing the sphagnum in around it and all we need to do like last time is just get some extra for the top here where we're poking and uh, kind of shoving some of this down pack it in the side again on the other side too take some pack it down and like we did with the last one what we do now is we take some of the distilled water and we just give it a good watering to kind of help settle all of that substrate into place so here we have our two repotted venus fly traps one is in the sphagnum moss and one is in the peat moss which i will repot shortly because i don't really like that but in a sense that's all you need to do it's kind of simple not really anything you need to be too gentle about uh, you just take the plant out of the old pot take all the old soil off and pack some new soil in the pot make a hole put the plant down in here and just pack in the soil back around the sides until it's even with the top and you've got some repotted plants so some extra notes is that the best time to do this is right after they've come out of dormancy. So either, you know, kind of like March and April and put them somewhere where the sun isn't too strong. Let them recover for about, um, you know, like a week or two after they've been repotted and everything should be good to go. So that is how you repot a Venus flytrap. Not much to it, but of course, if you have any questions, you can ask in the comment section down below. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be coming back with more Venus flytrap videos. So if you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, you'll be notified when I make a new one. So until then, good luck with your Venus flytraps.